Hi, I'm Natasha Gutierrez, and this is One on One. Just last week, the San Beda Red Lions took home their 17th title and became the winningest team in the NCAA, the oldest college league in the country. With me today is the head coach who led the Lions victory, who led the Lions to victory, Coach Ronnie Magsanok. Hi, welcome. Thank you, Ashley. Thanks for coming. Thank you also for having me here. I'm sure you've had a lot of interviews. I mean, rookie <laughs> year, a championship, 17th title, and uh -huh. the three feet. Has it sunken in? Uh, a little bit, a little bit. But uh, since we have not start uh, stopped working, um, you just you just continue to do what you need to do, mm -hmm. and in two weeks, we'll be resuming our practice. And that two weeks will end come Sunday. And so Monday is back to work again for the Red Lions. So you've only been off for two weeks? Two weeks. Two weeks. Very quick two weeks. And in those two weeks, what have you thought about? I mean, have you realized <laughs> the accomplishment? Um, after about 48 hours, mm -hmm. uh, you can feel the magnitude and um, the impact of the win. Initially, um, my attitude is after doing something or accomplishing something, you move on. Because um, I feel that there are so many things to do. Mm -hmm. for the team and for myself but with the way people reacted and I guess the Bedan community also um, reacted dun ko lang naisip talaga na it must be something special mm -hmm. for them for the priests and for the community and for the players uh, more, 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 most importantly and so I began to reflect a little bit and move away so that I can see what was happening after the bonfire after the masses after the the Thank you dinner with the boss MVP. Mm -hmm. And then I realized that um, it was a special time for me to be a part of uh, this journey. And uh, I just was so grateful and thankful for the chance to be a part of this uh, triumph. Can you describe the bonfire for us? Because, you know, compared <laughs> to Ateneo, which is, it's very publicized. We don't compare apples with oranges. Okay, okay, let's talk about that. <laughs> um, it was a thrill for me and the boys especially. We had a mass um, after we beat Letran. I think this was a Friday. Mm -hmm. So since I think people were not ready for the win, we had to go back the next day for the bonfire and the dinner for the boys. So it was, as I've always said, it, it is always um, that the red line should be the highlight, mm -hmm. the focal point of whatever celebration there will be because they were the ones who worked hard. So they should be the ones who should be trumpeted. Okay. And so there was, a, there was a bonfire situated near the basketball court. Uh, we cannot compare this to what Ateneo had because they had a huge, huge bonfire. But yes. still, a bonfire is a bonfire. And for the boys to be able to celebrate around that bonfire and the Bedan community to celebrate with them is good enough for me. So it's usually the school community that celebrates yes. with you? Um, that's the way the Bedan community has been ever since I was there in grade school and in high school. Mm -hmm. I remember in 1978 when San Beda won its uh, 11th crown because uh, the 12th crown happened 28 years after. I went to the campus after uh, the title was won by Coach Bonnie Carbon, and a few days after we had the bonfire, I was a part of that bonfire. Wow, okay. Uh, so it, it was quite kind of surreal. Mm -hmm. and at the same time, when you, you, when you move back a little and observe what people are doing, what the players are doing, you tend to appreciate what's happening. Mm -hmm. and so that is what I did. Um, of course, I was so happy and grateful, but I felt I, I, need, I needed to understand more of um, what it meant to the players and to the community because. Before I went to San Beda, I have been a part of the PBA for the last uh, 25 years. Okay, wow. So, my, or my, oh, my orientation has always been the Professional Basketball mm -hmm. Association. But this time, after I departed from college in 87, 88, how many years was this? 24 years 24 after, years. I'm back to the collegiate uh, ways. Mm -hmm. Very different. Uh, people here are more rabid. They're passionate about their basketball. They're passionate about their teams. Uh, in the PBA, it's all about being professional and doing your best and um, winning, the, winning the title. Here, it's more emotional. And so that is something that I had to understand, something that I had to sponge in, and mm -hmm. something that I had to uh, be used to. And so that is what I did, observe, watch, and, and then celebrate with the boys and the community. That sounds like a great experience. For me, especially. Because it's so new. Yes. Well, you mentioned that after your win, uh, the community might not have been prepared. I think they just wanted to be... Sure. 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 Yes. So well, after game two, after the tournament... I didn't know what happened. I didn't know, uh, I didn't know how they reacted. All I know mm -hmm. is that a lot of were disappointed. 
Uh, but personally, I, I knew for a fact that game three was going to be different. I didn't know that we were going to win. I wanted to win. I want, we you weren't sure. I, of course. Every <laughs> game that you play, you're not sure that you're going to win. Mm -hmm. Or else you just play on. Right. But I knew that we were ready. But behind the scenes, I didn't know what was happening. So you won game one by a slim margin. Game yes. two, Latran won. Yes. At any point after that game, did you think, wow, I could lose this of finals? Course. Of course. It was very real. Of course. Um, this is a team that lost twice in the, in the first round and once in the second round. Anytime you are up against any other team, mm -hmm. you can never be sure. I have played the game for the longest time. Even if you believe that you're better than the other team, mm -hmm. they, have, they will always be prepared and they have a champion coach talking about Letran. And I respect this team. This is, this is a team that beat San Sebastian right. four times. Mm -hmm. We have not touched San Sebastian once mm -hmm. the entire season. This is a team that has won eight of its last nine games. And so this is a confident team heading to the finals. They beat San Sebastian convincingly. We struggled, we struggled against Perpetual in the final four. Mm -hmm. But the thing is, you make it to the finals as the first team. And that will always give you the advantage, being a rested team. That is also what we did in the elimination round. Mm -hmm. We were two steps ahead of the others. Yes, we struggled. But the, big, but the big fact is, we made it. And for the doubters to say their opinions, we cannot do anything about that. The mission is simple. Get to the final four, get to the finals, and defend the crown. No matter how you do it, for as long as you do it, the mission will be accomplished. So it's step by step. Yes. Mm -hmm. You weren't sure if you were going to win game three, but did you expect it to be that lopsided? I, uh, I was praying for a win. Mm -hmm. I knew that it was going to go down the wire. Um, but I felt based on my playing experience and my uh, coaching experience that the team that has a good start will have a big advantage because it's a uh, winner take all situation okay and that's the reason why we tweaked our starting unit believing that should it work mm -hmm. it will be a huge advantage for us because our problem was in the last five games prior to game two we had very slow starts mm -hmm. but since the second unit is tough for the red lions we always manage to get the lead by the end of the first half. But in game two, it did not happen. Mm -hmm. In game two, third quarter, I felt a huge headache already. I said, I don't <laughs> know why we are not yet in the lead. And then we built a lead at the start of the fourth. Mm -hmm. I think that was quite late because when we built the lead, we got tired. Mm -hmm. And that's the reason why when I saw the tape after game two, I said, I made mistakes, I made blunders, I have to tweak it right away come game three. And were you surprised at how big the point deficit was? Yes. 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 But I also felt that Letran was quite fatigued already, mm -hmm. even if there was a five-day break in between games. Right. More than the physical aspect of uh, being tired, I think it's about the mental side of things. Okay. Um, I, I, I think that this generation is into the social network 24-7. Uh, mm -hmm. um, I don't know if they can shut it off or stay away from this. I call it distraction because so many things are happening um, during the game, before the game, and then after the game. Right. Um, There's always something yes. happening. Yes. So uh, my, my request, um, we talk about our team, to just read and put it aside. Mm. Um, telling them that whatever is going to happen should be dealt with inside the floor. You will be happy with, with what they will say after the game. But what they will say after the game, if we lose, you will not be happy about it. So before you focus on the social network, you do what you need to do. So you have to condition your minds. So did you tell them to game. have a social media break? No, 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 no. Just... I cannot do that. Yeah. And I will not do that. Okay. Because I, I have always believed that everything is by choice. Just basically not to take it in Sponge and kind of in. put it aside. Yes, okay. because I okay. knew for a fact that... It can be exhausting. Uh, yes, for them. <laughs> for them, for them. Uh, I have my daughters. I understand that... Uh, they tweet. Mm -hmm. uh, what else do they do? Instagram, Facebook. Uh, Facebook. <laughs> so I just wanted them to be able to focus just for one game, mm -hmm. because I, I, as I told them, this is a special time in your lives. It's so hard to get to this spot. I mm -hmm. know for a fact that it's not going to be an easy journey for you to come back here next year. If this is the same situation and this, it's the same journey, I don't know if you can get here next year. Okay. You get your chance now. You grab the chance. You seize mm -hmm. the day. Because there will be no promises. There will be no tomorrows, just today. Well, it's definitely been an exciting season. Oh, you can call it exciting. <laughs> I call it tough. 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 Very tough. 